This episode of the Soupcast is brought to you by the Spitballing Podcast. We here at the spot, we here at the Soupcast are thrilled to finally be talking about some baseball with our new sponsors, the Spitballing Podcast. We know that we give you some of the best football and basketball coverage for Ohio State, but baseball is booming, and we now have found your new MLB podcast, and that is the Spitballing Podcast, hosted by our very own Sloopcast Austin, his buddy Reed. Um, they are here for, just like here, there will be some shenanigans. There will also be some unbiased baseball coverage from someone who's grown up around the game as well as someone who is brand new to the game. Again, that is Spitballin', no G at the end, Spitballin' podcast, available at your favorite podcast streaming platform. What's up, YouTube? Oh, hey, Kyle. Oh, yeah. where, where, Kyle's gone. Bye, Kyle. Hi, Jared. I got a I got a dog who's like scratching at the door, and I had to let him out. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna actually put this on the correct frame. There we go. I needed I needed to actually put this on the correct frame. Um. There we go. We haven't done a. There we go. We haven't done a building blocks in a minute. I'm pretty excited about this. It's been a while. Yeah, I'm. I'm been a while. I'm excited. Yeah, pretty excited about this. We got. We're going to do our April um, mock here. Lots to talk about, Jared, so let's let's not waste any more time. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you? Uh, you know, recovering, recovering. Uh, I had to deal with, uh, you doing all of the, all of the work last episode. Like Kyle did the depth chart and, you know, but now it's my turn. I had Kyle, I had to, Kyle, had to do, Kyle did the depth chart and I just had to react to it. But now it's my turn, Kyle. Now it's my turn. That was yesterday's episode, by the way, in case anyone hasn't listened yet. Now it's my turn. Um, I have formulated a new mock class. Uh, this is our April mock for the 2023 recruiting class for Ohio State. Don't, don't, don't use that word, gangland. We don't do, we don't, we, we do solid pieces of chicken breast here. This is a breast friendly podcast. We, we don't do, we don't do, press board chicken in, in this podcast. <laughs> I just wanted to say breast friendly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Austin. That's exactly what I said. All right. Hi, Austin. Hi, Jared. Uh, now let's, uh, <laughs> let's get the easy one. I'm fine, Austin. Let's get the easy ones out of the way. Um, Cedric Hawkins, uh, Defensive back slash safety um, committed during the Rose Bowl. Uh, Florida kid, so you can, uh, Florida kid commits early, but all, all signs point to everything being stable. But he's a, he's part of the class already, so that's an easy one. Will Smith Jr., legacy kid, good genetics, uh, a bit underrated, might be a little bit developmental, but you know, like I said, good genetics. We'll figure it out. Um, Malik Hartford, uh, kid out of Lakota West, uh, might be a linebacker, might be a safety. Uh, he's officially marked as a safety as far as like 24 sevens concerned. But, you know, as, as we talked about during the recruiting or excuse me, during the spring camp episode yesterday, Ohio State really likes these hybrid players. So maybe this is a bandit bullet sort of guy who is, is playing like an up safety position. Uh, Joshua Padilla. Uh, he is from Wayne down near Cincinnati. Um, solid in the class. No worries there. Uh, interior offensive lineman. I would say, um, isn't that more near Dayton? 
Hey, they're, 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 Dayton and it Cincinnati is. are going to be one thing here soon. So don't don't I, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, it's all Southeast Ohio to me. <laughs> Southwest. Uh, don't, don't say that to people in Akron and saying it's part of Cleveland. Oh, I know. I've 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 been corrected on that before. You wish you were in Athens gangland. Athens is red. <laughs> um, next we have Luke Montgomery again. Uh, another great offensive lineman. Uh, th- this one's huge because like he's an in-state guy, but he's up in Finley. When we all know, like Finley is a border city, and he was in deep deep talk with with Michigan for a while. It felt like a kid that Ohio State really, really, really needed to get as far as keeping like one of the best players home, uh, keeping him away from Michigan and sort of rebuilding the the wall around Ohio, which is a thing that Ohio State's not been great at in recent years, especially with offensive linemen. So picking up Luke Montgomery was, was by no means a layup. Uh, and was by no means a thing that moving forward we should underestimate or overlook. Like this was a huge win for Ohio State, uh, keeping Luke Montgomery in state. Um, yeah, it's I, I think it's it's a it's a huge win. And by the way, a super needed position. Ohio State needs tackles. Joshua mm-hmm. Padilla, that's a dedicated interior offensive lineman right there. Um, Luke Montgomery, they need tackles. They need guys who are tackles and are tackles, period. Um, they abs- it's a huge position in need. Yep. Uh, yep, yep recent yep. commitment, Mark Fletcher running back. I do think Ohio State takes two running backs in this class. Uh, that being said, I think Mark Fletcher is a guy who is a, a number one quality running back. So let's not underestimate that by any means. Uh, but I do think Ohio state wants a second running back or maybe a, a first, you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, and uh defensive back pickup, uh, Dijon Johnson, uh, Dijon Johnson, um, safety, probably. Um, I, I, I would say he's a defensive back for sure. Um, a safety probably. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that plays out, but I think he's a guy who's solidly in the class. Um, again, is he a corner? Is he a safety kind of sounds like a cover safety to me? Again, this is kind of what Ohio state's doing right now with all these hybrid positions. So it's all good either way. Uh, you have Ty Lockwood. Uh, he's been in the class for a minute now. Um, he's a kid from Tennessee, a really nice pickup for Ohio state, um, is, is tight in a position of need for Ohio state. Yeah, probably. So does Ohio state pick up a second tight end in this class? I'm not predicting it in my mock here. I'm not predicting a second tight end to the class, but that's not me saying it's not going to happen. That's. That was just me needing to get to 25 people in the best way I could sort of balancing the likeliness of the player and the need of the position. It's sort of a balancing act. Um, and I, and I didn't add a second tight end. Okay. Um, next, another recent, uh, another recent pickup Bryson Rogers. Uh, he's from Florida, but kid with strong Ohio ties, uh, has family in Ohio, lived in Ohio uh, at, at, a, at certain points in his life. Um, this is an Ohio kid, despite the, the you know, currently living in Florida. So I, I think this is a great pickup for Ohio State. Obviously, um, you have a guy who is not super highly rated. Again, if, if you're looking to chase stars here, maybe you're like, oh, who's this guy? But if Ohio State, Ohio State gets who they want at wide receiver a lot of the time. Uh, so if Ohio State decided to take him as early as they did in the cycle, I'm I'm going to go ahead and trust Hartline on this one. Yep, agreed. Completely agreed. So, so those, that's, so that's so that's nine that's nine recruits right now, and currently Ohio State is ninth or not sorry ninth. They're third 
in the um, in the early early 2023 uh, recruiting cycle here. I think we're just on one early now. I'm I'm gonna say we're it's on April. one early. It's now. April. It's April. Fair enough. All right, Kyle. What position would you like me to talk about first? I'm gonna give that choice to you. Um. Let's 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 go ahead and do the defensive backs. Let's do the defensive backs. Defensive backs interesting. Ohio State went from starting one safety to starting three. And as we've talked about, a lot of that will be guys sort of moving to or you know, moving from corner to safety, which is a thing we've already seen plenty of with guys currently on the roster. Um, uh, you know, we we already talked about uh, Cedric Hawkins, as far as what his role is specifically, you know, is he, is he a corner? Is he a safety? You know, again, with Dijon Johnson, um, Dijon Johnson, um, is he a cornerback? Is he a safety? I think Hawkins, Hawkins to me feels more like a dedicated safety. Um, so I will count, I'm going to count Hawkins. This is just what I'm going to do. I am going to count Hawkins for the sake of this mock as a safety and I'm going to count um, Dijon Johnson as a corner for this safe for the, for the sake of this mock. Um, so I've had Ohio state Kyle picking up three additional safeties. Um, and again, <laughs> I, I, I hate to keep repeating myself. What, uh, who's a safety and who's a corner. And that all feels very sort of fuzzy to me right now. Um, so I have him picking up Caleb Downs. Uh, Caleb Downs is a safety from Tewittsville, Florida. Um, ranked in the top 250. I think there's a really good relationship there. Um, excuse me. I was looking at the wrong tab. Uh, <laughs> Not ranked in the top 250, ranked in the top 15. Uh, I was like, wait a minute. As I was saying that, I'm like, that's not right. Uh, definitely, I would say uh, we're going to mark him as definitely a safety. This would be a huge win. This is an elite player. You're going up against Bama and Clemson and Georgia and all of the best teams. This would be an enormous win for Ohio State. I'm giving a, I'm giving it to him for right now. Um, is that a reach? Maybe, but it's, it's, it's what I'm doing for the sake of this mock. Um, it might be optimistic. Uh, Clemson in the list of best teams is a reach. Listen, I'm just telling you who's, I'm telling you who's on his list. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, I mean, that's his I mean, list, Caleb, not my list. But I mean, Caleb Downs was just recently up at, um, Notre Dame for their, their yeah, don't um, count them out. Spring camp, spring camp too. So yeah. Don't Notre count Dame's them making out. a lot, of, a lot of pushes um, in recent months here. So yeah, especially on the Notre defensive Dame side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't keep, don't keep, um, don't leave Notre Dame out of the discussion either for a lot of these recruits. Now, uh, Damian Fagan uh, is another guy. Uh, he's from. Um, Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale, uh, the American Heritage School, which is a scholarship pipeline. Um, safety, I would say, probably. Um, I would. I like Ohio State's chances here more than I like Caleb Downs. Uh, Caleb Downs' chances to come to Ohio State, that is. So that one is, I mean, obviously not as big a win. That's no knock on Fagan. That's just. That's how good Caleb Downs is. Um, but Fagan feels more likely. Uh, Ohio State has had really good um, luck, really good success with American Heritage. So I, I like that one a bit more. Um, next, uh, Ohio State has also had some really good uh, success out of the New Jersey area. Uh, Jaden Bonsu. I'm probably mispronouncing that. Welcome to the Sloopcast. Um, sort of a rangy, big rangy guy. Um, not super highly ranked, but there's a good relationship there. And mm -hmm. if you look at who Ohio State's competing against, again, national rank, according to the official 24-7 uh, sports composite ranking, is 362. 
But Ohio State is uh, currently in competition with the uh, the likes of Alabama and Clemson and some other uh, highly ranked high. He holds all. I'm, what I'm trying to say is, is that he holds offers from all of the people you want to be holding offers from, including Ohio State, including Alabama, including. Um, I'll just I'll go down through. Uh, I'll go down through the offer list here: Bama, Arkansas, Boston College, Buffalo. Okay, Clemson, Georgia Tech, Kentucky, Maryland, Massachusetts, uh, Miami, Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State, Ole Miss, Penn State. Pittsburgh, Tennessee, USC, Wisconsin. Does that sound like someone who should be ranked 362 to you, Kyle? Probably not. Yeah. So don't 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 let that 362 scare you off. Uh, I think mm -hmm. he is a guy that Ohio State has a very nice chance with. Below, if we're talking like likelihood, below Fagan, but above Downs as far as likelihood that he comes to Ohio State. Uh, but that's uh, those are uh, the three defensive backs I'm putting in the class right now. Uh, three right. additional defensive backs I'm putting in the class right now. All right. What about uh, defensive linemen here? Uh, you want me to start with ends or tackles? Uh, let's do let's do tackles. So, I think Ohio State missed on a lot of the. I'm just this is just me playing saying this plainly. I think Ohio State missed on a lot of the guys they want. That's 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 again, that's just me saying it plainly. Um, I think that they're in really good position with defensive tackle right now with who's currently on the roster. Um, I only added one additional defensive tackle to this class, and I just want to say for the record, I don't anticipate that's actually how it's going to happen. That's just me trying to make 25 work with guys who I think are actually likely to sign. Um, so. I really could only find one defensive tackle out there uh, who I thought Ohio State had really good chance with and who the kid had a chance to Ohio State. So where it was like mutual. Um, and that's Amari Washington. Um, Amari Washington is out of Arizona. Uh, Chandler specifically. Um Top 150, uh, sitting at 134, according to this 24-7 sports composite ranking. Um, I think there's a good mutual interest there. I think that the the likelihood of that happening is pretty decent. Um, I did have him, Kyle, unlike the three safe, uh, the three defensive backs I mentioned, uh, I did have him in our January mock, which is the last time we did a mock. Um, so... I'm I'm holding I'm holding on Amari Washington as far as I think there being a real you know mutual interest there and um I, I think it's a thing that I feel I feel good that it's gonna happen. I feel pretty good that Amari Washington ends up in this class. Mm. All right. What about the what about the defensive ends here? Defensive ends feels um much more exciting as far as the opportunities go. And, you know, you potentially look at the defensive ends and you're asking yourself who might actually be a defensive tackle. Um, Cause I feel like, again, as far as where they're having success and where they're not having success, um, like I said, they missed on some defensive tackles. So I'm, I actually have four defensive ends to add to this class. Um, which would be five in total, which is too many. I'm just going to say that that's too many. Um, you might see one of these guys bump into defensive tackle. You could see one of these guys bump out to linebacker, uh, especially as they are, you know, formulating exactly how that Jack or Leo, or whatever we're calling it this week position plays out. But, this is just me quietly acknowledging that I have one defensive tackle that I'm adding to the class and four defensive ends I'm adding to the class and that that's probably not how it's going to shake out, but that's, that's what I have. Um, mm -hmm. First we'll talk about uh, AJ Hoffler. Um, AJ Hoffler is from Atlanta. Um, really good relationship with Larry Johnson, of course. Uh, top 300 guy, I, I, I like, I like the, I like the likelihood that this is going to happen. 
Uh, not necessarily a ton to say there. I just I feel pretty good about it. Uh, I had him in our January mock, and I'm I'm not bouncing off of that yet. Um, okay. Kyle, ooh, younger Lale. And yes, he is related. He is the younger brother of the Clemson quarterback. Um, he plays for John uh, St. John Bosco Prep in Bellflower, California. One of the most highly touted, highly ranked defensive ends in the class. And again, like you, you look at this guy as, you know, sort of a dedicated edge rusher. So, you know, could the Leo Jack be in play here? Yeah, I think so. Um, so, and, and I think that one, this is a huge get this is a five-star kid. Uh, the composite doesn't like him as much as the 24, seven sports, like 24, seven sports is actual rankings. Uh, it's number five, according to 24, seven sports, actual rankings, number 21, according to the composite. Um, but I coming out of the spring game specifically, um, I feel really, really good about the likelihood of this happening. Um, Ohio state doesn't necessarily have a ton of star power in this class to this point. Uh, and I think that would be a huge ad from, especially from that standpoint. No, oh, by the way, he's a really good player, right? Um, yeah. next up talk about Keon Keeley. Uh, Keon Keeley is a guy who is currently committed to, to Notre Dame. I just, I just want to acknowledge that currently committed to Ohio or excuse me, to, to, to Notre Dame. I don't know that I'm done here though. I don't know. Call it a weird feeling. Uh, yes, I, I did include someone who's currently committed elsewhere. Uh, call it a feeling. That's it. Just call it a feeling that, 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 that's it. Um, and to wrap up the, uh, defensive end slash edge guys, um, he, this is a guy who really, really could be a linebacker instead. Uh, so we, he's an edge rusher, right? So maybe he's a defensive end. Maybe he's a linebacker. Uh, we'll figure that out. Uh, in-state kid. Um, so especially if you're looking at him as a linebacker if Ohio state, um, isn't necessarily picking up the linebackers they need, um, from Glenville, which yes, that Glenville, uh, out of Cleveland, uh, his name is Arvell Reese, uh, top 400 guy, uh, top 10 within the state of Ohio. He's a guy who I, um, again, I, I wonder if Ohio state is going to get everyone they want at linebacker. And if they don't, um, that th I think this could be a, a great pickup for, for Ohio state. Awesome. So, so yeah, that was that's four defensive that's ends. A, that's a, I say that's, that's a lot of defensive ends, Jared. It is, um, but again, Reeves I actually have down as an edge player, and an edge player could also be a linebacker. Okay. So I pr probably should have included uh, Reese in the def excuse me in the linebackers instead. I could have done either. That's the one I did. Uh, Honestly, as far as like trying to make numbers work, it would have made more sense if I did that, but whatever. He's yeah. an, he's an edge guy. So we'll, we'll figure out the rest later. All right. I, I think, I think that's a good point, Jared, real quick to uh, take a quick ad break here. Oh boy. We're super over on that. Um, yeah. yeah. Kyle, this episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Spit Ballin' Podcast. Uh, we here at the Sloopcast are thrilled to finally be talking about some baseball with our new sponsors, the Spit Balling Podcast. We know that we give you some of the best football and basketball coverage in the Ohio State world, but baseball is now in full bloom, and we have a recommendation for you for your brand new favorite MLB pod. Take a listen to the Spitballing podcast with our very own Sloop Cat Austin and his buddy Reed, who is a lifetime baseball fan. Just like here, there'll be plenty of shenanigans, but there will also be unbiased MLB coverage from someone who's grown up around the game as well as someone who's relatively new to the game. So that is the Spitballing podcast, and it is available wherever you find podcasts Apple, Spotify, wherever. 
wherever you find podcasts is where you can uh, find the spit ballin. There's no G in that spit ballin podcast. <sighs> All right, Kyle. So what do you think of the mock so far? A L- lot of defensive linemen. I mean, Ohio, <laughs> Ohio yeah. State does have, um, does have one right now. Um, I, th- I think one thing that Ohio State really needs is um, I think they really they need to get some more good offensive linemen. Um, okay. Maybe 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 a good linebacker in here too in this class. Okay, I got I got answers to those questions. All right. Uh, let's talk about the offensive line. So I talked about Ohio State needing a at least one more dedicated tackle in this class. Like that's a huge need. They really need two dedicated offensive tackles in this class. Luke Montgomery is one of those kids. Done over with. We we got one of them shored up. They're gonna need a second one. Um, now, I'm, and I'm gonna mispronounce this young man's last name. Uh, but Austin Shreveld. Uh, I don't. Again, I don't. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, he's from Lakota East. Uh, he, uh, which is, uh, up near Cleveland. This is an Ohio kid. Um, here's the thing. He could play tackle. He could play guard. Um, we're not quite sure where he fits quite yet. Um, so, but I, I would say most likely interior. If, if you're counting him as a tackle in the class, that's probably a loss. I think ideally, you want him playing on the interior of the offensive line. So we're still, so that's three, that's two interiors, uh, one tackle. And and I think, I, I think, by the way, I think of all of the people I've named today, as far as potential ads, it's, it's him. And I think it's Uli Ungalale tied, but I think even more so him. So if I had to pick one, it's probably Austin. Uh, I'm going to try it again. Am I going to get it better this time? Probably not, but I'm going to try it again. Austin Shreveld. Um, I had him in the January mock. I have him again in this mock. Um, I think he's probably the most certain ad on my list. I think he's the most certain ad I have on the list right now. Um, but again, I probably an interior guy. So Ohio State needs to get a, a big win on the outside. They need to get a big win on the outside. And I have two guys who I put them both in this class. If they get both of them, that's huge. Me, including both of them in this mock is probably optimistic. Mm-hmm. Tossing that out there. But I want to include both of them because I think they have a pretty good shot at both of them but both of them individually. Does that make sense? I think they have a really good shot at either of them. Probably not both, but I think they have a really good shot at either of them. So I included them both in this mock, which again, probably optimistic to suggest that they get both. Um, But one is Chase uh, Basantis. Uh, He is from New Jersey, from the Don Bosco prep school. Uh, I had him in the January mock. I have him in this mock. I think this is, uh, of the two offensive tackles I'm going to name here, I think he's the more likely of the two. Again, I had him back in the January mock. So I'm going to hold tight on that. Um, The other guy, and I I am going to destroy this last name. I I apologize right up front. Samson Akunaway? Akunaway? (laughs) How's a Kunaway sound? <laughs> Samson Akunaway. Um, he is from Maryland, uh, the Thayer Academy. This is another huge, uh, I mean, literally huge, literally huge, uh, six, six, almost 300 pounds would be a huge pickup for Ohio state. This is a five-star player. Um, I, I, I would go with uh, Akun, Akunola. Oh, that's why is my, Oh, those, that's an L I need to clean my monitors, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally screwed that up. Cause I thought that L was an I. 
um i i yeah i'm i boy i need i need to clean my monitors uh but yeah uh ohio state needs one of these two guys i i think basantis is more likely um and i again i don't think they get both gotcha but man uh, so, if they got both <laughs> so another thing looking looking at this looking at this well, Kyle, you were still year. asking me about linebacker yes yes you you wanted was a there, linebacker was there, was there another was there another one outside of um potentially reese who's kind of the edge yeah uh, i think oh well, i think potentially one of those safeties could be a linebacker but anyway um yeah reese uh but also uh tackett curtis uh he is from louisiana believe it or not uh you don't see ohio state excuse me getting a ton of guys uh out of louisiana uh and he is from the many high school yes i'm not saying he's from many high schools in louisiana i'm saying he's from many which is a high school in louisiana are you keeping up I'm <laughs> uh, top 100 linebacker, really just outside the top 50. Um, I think this would, this would be a, both a huge pickup for Ohio state. And I also think it's at least somewhat likely. I think uh, he got a Wilt Fong uh, crystal ball, a pretty decently high. Uh, it was like a six, I think. Um a month or six weeks or so back. Um, this, uh, I, this would be huge for Ohio state. I, I think if you, if you get Curtis and then you combine that with the linebackers in the 2022 class who are currently freshmen on the roster, um, that that's a linebacking core right there. Uh, that would be huge for Ohio state. Um, so add, add him with probably Arvell Reese, who I probably should have included as a linebacker uh, instead of mm -hmm. maybe just like a edge guy. But yeah, I, I th and I think that's probably your linebacker class um, uh, combined with Malik Hartford, who is maybe a linebacker, maybe a safety. Um, so yeah, I think that's I think that's probably your linebacker class. Looking at this class here, Jared, um, one receiver, one running back, zero quarterbacks for yeah, no quarterback for yet. this for this class here. So, is there is there any anything left that Ohio State's going after, or, or who you think Ohio State will will go after? I think I think a name that we've talked about many times before was uh, Carnell Tate out of IMG Academy, wide receiver. Um, do you have him on this list? I do. I had him on the January mock. I continue to have Carnell Tate on, on this mock. Um, I, I don't know why. Pe I, I feel like I've been talking about him forever. Um, I don't know. He's from IMG, but he's not from IMG. He's actually from, Ch I mean, he is from IMG, but he's not actually from Florida. He's from Chicago. I feel like if you've listened to this podcast for any amount of time, I feel like you've heard this, this, this before. Right. Um, I'm, I'm, I've had him at Ohio state this entire time. Uh, is Notre Dame there? Yes. Are there some other schools there? Yes. Am I worried about it? Not particularly. I, I, I still just have him sitting there at Ohio state. And I had just have not heard anything to, to shake me from that. Uh, to round out the wide receiver class, um, I do think it's three wide receivers. I, I included three wide receivers here. I do think it's three. Um, I have Noah Rogers. Uh, Noah Rogers is from North Carolina. Kyle, can you help out with that? Um, uh, he's uh, just outside the top 50 uh, wide receiver. Um, uh, top, well, top 50 of all the players, he is a wide receiver. Um, 6'2", 180. Um, like I said, according to the composite, number 59 overall, uh, the 10th wide receiver in the class, and the number one player out of the state of North Carolina. Ohio State's had some really good success getting kids out of North Carolina recently. Um, I feel like Noah Rogers added with Carnell Tate. 
And then, of course, with Bryson Rogers on top of that, I think that's your recruiting class. Um, I know there are a lot of people out there who still want Brandon Ennis. Um, a lot of people have him going to the USC. Um, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, we'll still Ohio State. So maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. Um, I think they want three wide receivers, but if that fourth wide receiver is Ennis, they'll make it work. If that fourth wide receiver is in us, they will make it work. Um, but I, I feel like it's these three, and if they can get in us, they'll go four wide receivers, and if they can't, they'll go three wide receivers. But I do think it's these three guys. Okay. All right, Kyle, that leaves us with two two more spots. Um, I, I said when we were going through the current commits that I felt like Ohio State was going to get another running back. Um. This, this, this is optimistic. This is optimistic. Just saying it right now that this is optimistic. Uh, I have Justice Haynes. Uh, he is a running back out of Roswell, Georgia. Um, the, the, the smart folks have him going to Georgia. They're probably right. <laughs> um, I, I still, it still feels like a, and, and he's not a guy. He's not a guy who I had in the in the mock last time. Um, but Ohio State has appeared to missed on Young. He appears to be going to Alabama. Um, I think Justice Haynes would would probably be the next guy you look at as far as like that top tier five star or almost five star running back. Um, probably Georgia, though. Uh, I just don't necessarily know who that second running back is. I think I, I know Ohio State wants a second running back. Um, they want someone. They want someone else. Um, I don't know who that is. I think they want it to be. I want it to be Justice Haynes. Uh, I don't. I just, he's in the recruiting class. He's in this mock. I put him in the mock. But I, if I told you I was confident about it, I'd be lying to you. Finally, Kyle, uh, everyone seems very worried about the quarterback position. And of course, like, of course, right? A couple of things have, I'd like you to... Only have, you only have three. You only have three on roster right now. Right. And you'll you'll have two. By the time this recruiting class signs, you'll have two. CJ Stroud will be on his way to the NFL. I'm calling that shot now. Um, I think in the last mock, I had Cameron Edge. I don't have the last mock up. But I think that's who I had in the last mock. He has since committed to Maryland. That's fine. Um, that was that's a that was a real flyer of a pick by my hand. Anyway, I think if you, if you go back and listen to that mock class, I think I straight up said I just picked the, like there were so many quarterbacks who they were good with, but none that they were great with. So I just end up picking a guy. Um, and a lot of the guys on that list are guys that that's it's not going to happen. Uh, one of the, but one of the guys I had initially on that list who I still feel, I mean, I'm not going to say I feel great about it, but I do feel pretty good. I feel pretty good about Dylan Lundgren. Um, again, this is not me saying he's absolutely going to be a part of the class and whatnot, because I, I'm not willing to say that. Um, I am going to say that I think Dylan Lundgren is probably the most likely name I can give you right now in this 2023 yeah, class. He's the most likely name I can give you right now. And it's probably under 50%, but I think he's the most likely name I can give you right now. Uh, he mm -hmm. is the number 100 player round exactly at 100 player in the 24 sports composite ranking right now. Uh, the ninth best player uh, as a quarterback in the class right now. Um, some would call him undersized at 6'2", 215, but I, 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 that doesn't, it really doesn't bother me that much. That's the, I think that's sufficiently tall. All right. Yeah. I, I take this as a house state needs to keep looking at offensive linemen. There's some, some good options here, but definitely, definitely be concerned if 
Uh, so it's really trying to needing and trying to get a quarterback, another quarterback and running back in this class. Yeah. Um, if they don't get a quarterback in this class, they'll find a guy in the portal. Um, and on top of that, well, there, there they didn't bring new... Kyle. They didn't bring Stroud in until late. Uh, they didn't bring Brown in until late. Um, I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're, at this they're, point they're, in their recruiting cycles, we didn't talk about Devin Brown at all. We didn't talk about CJ Stroud at all. No, but there is, there is good news in the 2024 class with the quarterback quarterback though. I, uh, you know what? I'll allow it. You, you're out, you're out of line counselor. No, I, I was just going to tease that. I was just going to tease it. that. No, no, no. I was go ahead and tease that. Go ahead and say it. Oh, um, <laughs> Uh, Dylan Riola, um, the kid over out in Arizona, one of the best players for for the 2024 class here. And yeah, it has State very, very early on isn't really good. Um, um, good position to land Dylan again for the 2024 class as a quarterback. Currently the number one quarterback, the number one player uh, recruit for the 2024 class as well. So good news on the quarterback. If Ohio State doesn't get one here for the 2023 class, but yeah, like Jared said, there's players in the transfer portal, but yeah, I still, I, I still don't like seeing three court, three quarterbacks on roster. I, I don't want to, I'm just going to toss the thing out there. I don't want to name names. Um, as far as the 2023 quarterback situation is concerned, there's another option. There's another option, and I think that's uh, a quarterback reclassifying from 2024. Um, okay. I really don't want to get into the business of broadcasting, encouraging players to... Because I, I don't know how I feel about players reclassifying um just is that is that good for them should they be doing that so i, I don't want to like glorify it or talk about it too much um but the the other option as far as a 2023 quarterback goes is actually a 2024 quarterback reclassifying and i don't feel as strong about that opinion as i did maybe a month ago. Um, but I think it's still something to watch. All, All right. right. That's, your, um, that's your, that's your 25 players for, for our, um, April mock class. I tell you what, Kyle, honestly, for being as late into the recruiting cycle as we are right now, I feel terrible about that mock. I'm just going to say it. I feel terrible about that mock. I, I don't feel, I don't feel great about it. Um, it's the, especially from a defensive back standpoint, um, there was just such an upheaval with the defensive staff replacement. Um, and it just, it changed the landscape a lot. Um, you know, Ohio state's not in on AJ Harris anymore, which is a huge loss. Um, I don't want to say they aren't in anymore. I'm saying they're, they're losing, but they're, steam. they're, they're, uh, they just say they lost steam. Like, I feel like they're maybe on the side of the road. Does Ohio state have triple a is the question. Um, yeah, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of questions. There, there was a lot of upheaval with the staff replacement on the defensive side. So I feel very unsure about a lot on the defensive side of the ball as far as recruiting class goes. I feel pretty good about some of my offensive predictions. I feel like I was throwing some darts against the ball on the on the offense, or excuse me, on the defensive side. I'll be honest. I'll I'll mm -hmm. call I'll, I'll call it. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. All right, Kyle. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Let's wrap this one up. Um, not, not really, not really. That's fair. So, I mean, it's, I know we're a lot over, so let's just, yeah, let's just go ahead and, um, end it early. Let's here. end it.
yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna end this one quickly. Um, we played them on Tuesday, or excuse me, on Monday. We'll play them again on Tuesday from Cedarville, Ohio. This is Wolves at the Gate. Uh, Wolves at the Gate again from Cedarville, Ohio. Like if you didn't hear my warning uh, last week, uh, this this band is heavy. So that's not a thing you're down for. Be forewarned. This is about to get loud. So. With all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Wolves at the Gate. Mm-hmm.